In this corner, we have the Shure SM58. And in this corner, we have the Behringer B2 Pro. This is a vocal style dynamic microphone, of course, a legendary microphone. And this is a large diaphragm condenser microphone. They both require XLR cables. The Behringer B2 Pro does require phantom power, while the SM58, of course, does not. The frequency response for the Shure SM58 is 50 to 15, while the Behringer B2 Pro is 20 to 20. Now, the Behringer B2 Pro does indeed have more options on the actual microphone, but we're going to use the cardioid pickup pattern because that's the same pickup pattern as our Shure SM58. So which style of microphone would work better for things like podcasting or uh, voiceovers for YouTube, you know, voice for your YouTube videos, a small diaphragm or normal diaphragm, a capsuled uh, Shure SM58 or something like a large diaphragm condenser microphone. Well, that's what we're going to find out here. So let's go ahead and start the mic war. All right, here we are in Pro Tools with samples from our dynamic microphone, in this case, an SM58 and a large diaphragm condenser microphone, in this case, the Behringer B2 Pro. We have raw samples and processed samples. The processed samples are run through Isotope Nectar 2, and that's because Nectar 2 includes an EQ, gate, deesser, compressor, limiter, so on and so forth, all of the tools you're going to use whenever you want to produce a professional vocal sound. The raw samples, as you will notice, they have clip gain on them, so we have adjusted the volume higher. Otherwise, if this was down closer to zero, be from a and you hear that, microphone -like. then you hear the process sample. Obviously, much farther than you. It's much, much louder, and that makes for a bad, bad listening experience. So the raw samples are adjusted up higher in volume, but there is no processing on these files on the raw files versus the processed files. So all of that said, let's go ahead and start this mic war between a dynamic microphone and a condenser microphone. Sure, SM58 dynamic microphone from around one foot away. One foot is obviously much farther than you would normally be from a dynamic microphone like this, but nonetheless, here is the Shure SM58 from around one foot away. The Behringer B2 Pro from around one foot away. The B2 Pro is a large diaphragm condenser microphone. The Shure SM58 dynamic microphone from around one foot away. One foot is obviously much farther than you would normally be from a dynamic microphone like this, but nonetheless, here is the Shure SM58 from around one foot away. The Behringer B2 Pro from around one foot away. The B2 Pro is a large diaphragm condenser microphone. The Shure SM58, this time from around six inches away. Listen to the sound of the voice. Is this something that you would want for your podcast or for your uh, YouTube video, a dynamic microphone like the Shure SM58. Again, six inches away. The Behringer B2 Pro from around six inches away, a large diaphragm microphone. Listen to the sound of the voice, the quality of the voice. Is this the sound of voice you would like for your voiceovers, for your YouTube videos, for your narration, or for your podcast? Again, from around six inches away, from this large diaphragm condenser microphone. The Shure SM58, this time from around six inches away. Listen to the sound of the voice. Is this something that you would want for your podcast or for your uh, YouTube video, a dynamic microphone like the Shure SM58? Again, six inches away. The Behringer B2 Pro from around six inches away, a large diaphragm microphone. Listen to the sound of the voice, the quality of the voice. Is this the sound of voice you would like for your voiceovers, for your YouTube videos, for your narration, or for your podcast? Again, from around six inches away from this large diaphragm condenser microphone. The Shure SM58, around three inches from this microphone, but this time with an air conditioner on in the background to get an idea of uh, how much environment noise will you pick up if you are using the Shure SM58 for your podcast or for your uh, YouTube video. Also, I can type on a keyboard just to get an idea again of the uh, pickup 
in the background of the Shure SM58. The Behringer B2 Pro, this time around three to four inches away, but we have an air conditioner on in the background to get an idea of sound that might be picked up in a room. And we're also typing on a keyboard to hear the background noise with the voice. Get an idea of how a large diaphragm condenser is very sensitive to its surroundings. The Behringer B2 Pro large diaphragm condenser microphone. The Shure SM58, around three inches from this microphone, but this time with an air conditioner on in the background to get an idea of uh, how much environment noise will you pick up if you are using the Shure SM58 for your podcast or for your uh, YouTube video. Also, I can type on a keyboard just to get an idea again of the uh, pickup in the background of the Shure SM58. The Behringer B2 Pro, this time around three to four inches away, but we have an air conditioner on in the background to get an idea of sound that might be picked up in a room. And we're also typing on a keyboard to hear the background noise with the voice. Get an idea of how a large diaphragm condenser is very sensitive to its surroundings. The Behringer B2 Pro large diaphragm condenser microphone. The Shure SM58 dynamic microphone. This time we are around two inches away, which is the average distance you would be from a microphone such as the Shure SM58. And you can come in even closer if you want and take advantage of that proximity effect. Now we are literally right up on the grill of the Shure SM58 dynamic microphone. I'll back up to around two inches away again of the Shure SM58 dynamic microphone. The Behringer B2 Pro, this time from around two to three inches away from this large diaphragm condenser microphone, you can definitely start hearing this microphone open up as you start to get closer, like we are two to three inches away, I can even come even closer to this microphone, get around one inch away, and it really opens up. You can take advantage of that proximity effect, get that enhanced low end, and basically get that sort of radio voice very easily once you really start to get closer to a large diaphragm microphone like the Behringer B2 Pro. Again, the Behringer B2 Pro, a large diaphragm condenser microphone. The Shure SM58 dynamic microphone, this time we are around two inches away, which is the average distance you would be from a microphone such as the Shure SM58. And you can come in even closer if you want and take advantage of that proximity effect. Now we are literally right up on the grill of the Shure SM58 dynamic microphone. I'll back up to around two inches away again of the Shure SM58 dynamic microphone. The Behringer B2 Pro, this time from around two to three inches away from this large diaphragm condenser microphone, you can definitely start hearing this microphone open up as you start to get closer, like we are two to three inches away. I can even come even closer to this microphone, get around one inch away, and it really opens up. You can take advantage of that proximity effect, get that enhanced low end, and basically get that sort of radio voice very easily once you really start to get closer to a large diaphragm microphone like the Behringer B2 Pro. Again, the Behringer B2 Pro, a large diaphragm condenser microphone. And there we have it. Battle of the Titans dynamic versus condenser. Which one sounds better for voice, for podcasts, for YouTube videos, for narration, so on and so forth. They each have their uses. You can definitely tell how the dynamic rejects sound much better, you know, background noise much better, off access noise much better than a condenser does. But a condenser also has a certain sound and a certain proximity effect that uh, you can't get normally 
with a dynamic microphone. And if you wanted to get that sound, you'd have to really go into your EQ and start to really, you know, go in there and mess with stuff. But overall, my opinion, the SM58 sounds, you know, sounds pretty good for its price. With a little bit of EQ, you can really get in there and sort of enhance that low end a little bit more. You can really bring out the vocal quality. And the same thing for our large diaphragm condenser, in this case, the B2 Pro, go in there with some EQ and really carve out the frequencies that you don't want in there. And you can get a great vocal sound with the large diaphragm condenser as well. So in your opinion, which of these microphones sounds best for your uses, for your close miking uses for voice? Just drop a comment below and let's see who wins the mic war.